Every time I post my illustration, I always add a bit of animation to the intro. Naturally, this raises some questions from my followers on social media. How do I do it? And what apps do I use? All right, let's dive into how I make my illustrations move like this. The first step you need to prepare is planning your illustration. Which parts will move? Is it the hair, the eyes, the mouth, or small items around it? Plan carefully, because when you draw later, these items need to be separated if you want to animate them. The next step is to complete your illustration. Draw every detail with the items separated like this. So many layers, right? Once you're done, it's time to add animation. Do I draw frame by frame for this complex illustration? The answer is no. I use the keyframe feature. Actually, there are many ways and applications to do this. So far, the apps I've tried to animate my drawings are Clip Studio Paint, CapCut, and Live 2D Cubism. Of course, each app has its own keyframe feature. However, since we've already drawn in Clip Studio, let's just use this app to animate as well, so we don't have to switch to another app. First, let's understand what the keyframe feature is and how it works. In modern animation or video editing software, Keyframes are used to determine changes in various parameters, such as position, rotation, scale, opacity, and so on. By setting keyframes at various points on the timeline, the animator or editor can automatically create complex animations or transitions between those keyframes. Let's jump into an example. I'll create a new canvas. You can press here to display your animation timeline. Then click New Timeline to create a new animation timeline. After that, create a new animation folder and make a new animation cell inside that folder. This time, I'll try to make a moving ball. Just draw a circle shape on your animation cell layer. Then click Enable Keyframe on this layer and a keyframe mark will appear on your timeline. You decide on which frame your ball will move. Choose the object tool to move your ball like this. Then add a new keyframe and a new keyframe mark will appear. Next, you can test your animation. You can also copy keyframes to make your object return to its original position. And there you have it, a moving ball animation. The keyframe function can only scale, move, and rotate your object. I'll jump straight to my finished illustration so there's no need to show my drawing process. For example, this time I want to make the plant in the foreground move. So I'll open the timeline window and create a new timeline. Then I'll create a new animation folder and name it leaves. Insert the leaves layer into the animation folder. Next, we'll insert this layer into the animation timeline and start enabling the keyframe feature. Then move to another frame and start changing the position of the leaves. By the way, I set it to 30 FPS, which means that 30 frames will result in just one second. After setting the keyframes to your liking, try testing the animation. If it doesn't seem quite right, you can adjust the keyframes to suit your preferences. Next, let's move on to a more complex object, the eyes. First, I'll separate the layers for the male and female eyes. Additionally, I'll also separate the upper and lower eyelids. Once they are separated, I'll try animating the female's eye closing. I'll start by adjusting the eyeball. Using the keyframe feature, I'll shrink the eyeball so it won't be visible when the eye is closed later. I forgot to separate the eyebrow, so make sure to separate the eyebrow if you want to animate the eye. Next, I'll animate the upper eyelid. Simply rotate and move it downward toward the lower eyelid.
For the lower eyelid, I'll scale it to make it look like it's covered by the upper eyelid. After that, since I made the shading on the eye too dark, I'll adjust it so it looks better when the eye is closed. Finally, just test the animation. Next, it's time to set up the camera. Go to the animation window and add a 2D camera folder. Then place all the layers of your illustration into that camera folder. After that, simply adjust the camera view to your liking. Coincidentally, I wanna try a zoom out mode, which will look like this. My laptop isn't powerful enough to render smoothly, so it lags, but at least you get the idea and can try it out yourself. Once you're satisfied with your animation, just export it. That's how I make my illustrations move using the keyframe feature in Clip Studio Paint. There are other ways too, like drawing frame by frame, but if there's an easier way, why choose the harder one, right? That's all for this video. I hope you find it useful.